After reviewing the S24 Ultra, which is one of Samsung's flagship phones, now it's time to look at other members of the S24 family. As you can see, the S24 and S24 Plus are here. If you prefer phones that are sleek and comfortable rather than thick and large with 600 cameras, a stylus, and a big display, then reviewing the S24 and S24 Plus is for you. Stick around till the end of the video. We have a lot to talk about. Samsung has concluded in the past few years that it shouldn't stick to its brand formula and should make small changes. When these changes come together, they make a significant difference. So let's go over the changes in the S24 and examine their pros and cons. In the review of the S24 Ultra, we saw how Samsung managed to improve the feel and look of the phone without drastically changing its appearance by flattening and titaniumizing the frame. Here we have a similar situation, except there's no mention of a titanium frame. Instead, Samsung has used a new alloy called Armor Aluminum, which should make the phone more resistant on paper at least. The frame surface of the phones is both matte and flat. There's also a fine chamfer around the back edge of the frame, making the phone feel smoother and better in hand. It's unbelievable how these small changes can make the phone more likable. If only Samsung applied the same fine chamfer to the top edge of the frame as well, it wouldn't feel as sharp. Apart from the frame changes, the colors of the S24 are exceptionally pleasing and truly attractive, ranging from yellow and orange to purple and green. Here we have the marbled purple and gray colors, with the purple color being particularly delightful. However, the gray one has its charm too, but I really enjoyed the purple one. The matte frame harmonizes well with the body color of the phone, and I think it's a shame for someone to cover it with a case because it not only hides the eye-catching color, but also reduces the comfort. As for the feel of the phones in hand, what can I say? It feels great. I can really say that this phone is made for those who don't like heavy and bulky phones like the S24 Ultra. The S24 feels so comfortable that it almost reminds me of the good old days of iPhones like the SE. But yeah, it has a 6.2-inch screen, and if someone feels they need a bigger display, they should go for the Plus model with a 6.7-inch screen, which is about 30 grams heavier. The S24 screen is like before, Full HD+, Plus, which is really good for this size, but the S24 Plus screen resolution has changed to QHD+, Plus, so its image clarity is a bit better than the S24 Ultra. We also have Penla, which has great contrast and deep blacks, although it seems Samsung has reduced the color vibrancy a bit. There's a new feature called Adaptive Color Tone added to Samsung phones, which works like Apple's True Tone, adjusting the display color according to the surrounding light for the best user experience. Another change in both devices is the refresh rate. Samsung used LTPO in both phones this year, so now both phones can adjust the refresh rate between 1 to 120 hertz based on the content, making the user experience smoother and preserving battery life. In our tests, we achieved around 13-14 hours of battery life on the S24 and S24 Plus, a bit more than the previous generation. Part of this improvement comes from panel technology, and part of it comes from Samsung increasing the battery capacity by 100 to 200 milliamper hours. In the S24 and S24 Plus, the brightness of their screens is important. Samsung aims for them to reach 2600 nits, but we measured the S24 brightness at around 2900 nits, which is really impressive. It means you won't be bothered by intense sunlight when using your phone. You can even use it as a light source, which is quite unusual. However, note that there's no mention of Gorilla Glass armor here to reduce light reflection like in the Ultra. Samsung, like the previous generation, used Gorilla Glass Victus in these phones. Let me also mention that this year, apart from China, the US, and Canada, there's no news of Snapdragon chips for the S24 and S24 Plus in the rest of the world. After a year of hiatus, Samsung has reintroduced Exynos to its flagship models, but only for the base and Plus models. Based on our previous experiences, we didn't have much hope for Exynos, but Samsung says the performance of Exynos 2400 
is no different from Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. In practice, we see that the perennial problem of performance differences between Exynos and Snapdragon models has been largely resolved. On the other hand, compared to the S23 models, we see good improvements, which is another positive point for the S24 series. But what about overheating? Let's talk about overheating, which has always been a problem with Exynos phones. Samsung says they've passed a bigger vapor chamber this year to cool down their phones, but what we've seen is that Exynos still heats up during heavy processing, like gaming or stress tests. However, in the S24 Ultra, we didn't see this happen with the same intensity. But the good news is, in everyday use, this problem doesn't occur, and the phone's temperature stays normal unless you're into heavy gaming, unlike the Pixel 8 Pro which starts heating up as soon as the screen turns on. It's not strange to focus on hardware performance because the phone doesn't come cheap, but Samsung's main maneuver this year, which wasn't hardware-related, was fully shown to us in its unpacked event. Since we practically had the whole event about Galaxy AI and artificial intelligence features of the S24 series, it's time to talk about the AI features in the S24 and S24+. Plus. Samsung has filled its phones with AI capabilities using Google's Gemini language models, although the use of these features is only free for the first two years. Samsung provides AI features in the One UI 6.1, which is the default user interface for the S24 series. This interface is based on Android 14, and the important news is that the S24 series phones are supposed to receive system updates for up to seven years. This way, users' pride in owning a Pixel 8 won't last longer than a few months. Now we have to see if these phones even have the hardware potential to support software updates seven years later. Anyway, it's a discussion for another time. Even though Samsung Galaxy AI was mostly focused on the S24 Ultra, we should know that regular models also have this capability. Plus, it will be added to the S23 series through an update. One interesting feature of Galaxy AI is Circle Search, which you may have heard about before. It revolutionizes your experience with search engines, making it really cool. Just draw a circle around anything you want to search for, and AI will search it for you on the same page and show you the results. The Circle Search feature is really good, except that it has limitations in finding people. For example, you won't be able to find me because I'm not famous, but it's very good at recognizing objects and showing you similar results. Another feature is Live Translate, which is great for those who communicate with foreigners, like when they travel or for any other reason. What does it do? Well, it comes into action when someone calls you from their Samsung phone app or when you exchange messages. It translates both sides simultaneously so you don't have to quickly search Google Translate for everything the other person says. Currently, this feature supports 13 languages, but Samsung plans to add more in the future. Another cool feature is Transcript Assist, which is very useful for students, journalists, or those who attend many meetings. You record with voice during a meeting or class, and this feature converts it into text. Then it can summarize the text, organize a similar content, and deliver it neatly to you. Artificial intelligence helps in photography by showing itself and assisting you in editing photos. In Galaxy AI, we have the same magic editor feature as seen in Pixel phones. When you take a photo, you can do various edits right there. For example, you can select objects and people and then move them around or change the angle of the photos. Moreover, AI adds other elements based on the photo itself, just like content-aware fill in Photoshop. Speaking of photography, the specifications of the S24 and S24 Plus cameras haven't changed from last year, kids. We still have the same primary 50-megapixel camera, a triple telephoto, with a 10-megapixel sensor and an ultra-wide 12-megapixel camera this year as well. According to the photos we took, it seems that the image processing module doesn't play a significant role in improving the final images in the new chip. Let's look at a few photo examples together to discuss this further. 
In some conditions, the S24 doesn't have any special superiority over the S23. For example, the colors of the S24 look more realistic in this photo. However, it has fewer details in the bright areas of the image, making details appear sharper. Now in this photo, the same situation with more realistic colors of S24 is repeated. On the other hand, it has less noise and can capture better details. In this photo, the colors and appearance of both phones are similar, but the level of detail is slightly higher in the S24 Plus photo. Now in this one with three times zoom at first glance, we might not see much difference between the two phones anymore. But the S24 also has higher contrast and more details. In this portrait photo we took of Shay Don, S23 literally made her face look like a mask, but S24 has more natural colors and more details, and she doesn't look like a mannequin anymore. Overall, it seems that S24 might have better control over artificial light sources in low-light photography and can capture more details from the subject. Okay, with all these features, should we finally buy the S24 and S24 Plus or not? Let's see, as I mentioned, the changes in these phones are just like the S24 Ultra, minor, but these changes, I can say, aren't as impactful as the Ultra model, at least for the S24, which is in this situation, especially if we consider the current price difference of the phones with their previous generations. Samsung has removed the 8GB RAM from the Plus model, and now all Plus versions come with 12GB of RAM, but S24 has only one version with 12GB, the rest have 8GB. Like the previous generation, the storage memory of the 128GB model is slower compared to the other models. While the Plus model starts from 256GB and all its models have the same speed. The Plus model's display has been upgraded to QHD+, and now it has a higher resolution. Although kids might not consider it a significant advantage over the full HD plus screen of the regular model because the difference in resolution is not very noticeable in these dimensions. The camera hardware hasn't changed, but the photography experience has improved somewhat. Despite all its advancements, the Exynos chip still doesn't manage heat as efficiently as the Snapdragon, despite being close in performance. So, if you're not into heavy gaming you might not even notice a performance upgrade compared to the S23. However, you'll definitely notice more heat production. Therefore, if you already have the S23 or S23 Plus and you're watching this video, there isn't much justification to upgrade your phone. If you have an older phone with the money for the regular S24, you could get the S23 Ultra instead. Don't forget that Samsung's AI capabilities, which they have a lot of, will soon be added to the S23 series as well. With all of these, if the prices drop a bit, a bit like if they say it's lower than the S23 Ultra, then both phones, with their attractive and desirable colors, are attractive options to buy. All right, guys, thank you for being with me until the end of the S24 and S24 Plus review video. If you have any remaining questions, write them in the comments. And by the way, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We're trying to make a cool camera comparison video for you. Like, for example, having the S24 Plus alongside the S24 Ultra and comparing it with the iPhone 15 Pro Max. We can also compare it with Pixel, compare Pixels, and have some nice events. I really want us to be able to work on the video sooner.